Hey, let me show you how to make this bunny stitch Moses basket. I'll show you how to do the crochet pattern and I'll show you how to make the little basket. And it just fits a really small doll. Let's get started. I'm using yellow and white for my main colors. I'll be holding these two strands, Red Heart Super Saver. This is my bunny color. This is the grass color. And this is the contrasting color. You will need three crochet hooks, an L, a K, and an H, an eight millimeter, 6.5, and a five millimeter. Holding two strands of yarn, let's make a slip knot and chain 15. You'll be using your L hook. I am using Red Heart Super Saver yarn. It's a stiff yarn. I recommend a stiff worsted weight yarn. Then half double crochet in the second chain from the hook. Right there's the second chain, one, two, and half double crochet in this chain, and then in the next 12 chains. So that will be 13 half double crochets across. Let me speed that up for you. Now when we get to that last stitch, we will execute three half double crochets in that last stitch. Three half double crochets. We will be turning the corner and going down the back side and crocheting down the back side. You can wrap those tails down in there if you'd like. All right, we've made a corner, we've made a turn. Now start executing a half double crochet in each of these loops. That's the back side of each chain. And do that for 12 stitches. Let me speed the camera up for you. In this last stitch, you will need to execute two half double crochets. So at the end of each oval, you're going to have three half double crochets. Now join with a slip stitch to the top of that half double crochet. Bypass that chain and execute a slip stitch in the top of that first half double crochet. Now we're moving to round two. Round two, chain one, and two half double crochets in that joining stitch. Now two half double crochets in the next stitch, and a half double crochet in each of the next 11 stitches. So that's a half double crochet in the next stitch 11 times. Let me speed it up. We have 11 stitches. Now we need to execute two half double crochets in the next four stitches. Now we have finished the two half double crochets in the next four stitches. Now we execute a half double crochet in the next 11. We're at the end. Now it is two half double crochets in the next stitch two times. So in the next two stitches, it's two half double crochets and then a join. All right, let's do that. Now remember, bypass that chain and join at the top of that joining stitch. We are now at round three. After the join chain one and two half double crochets in the joining stitch, and two half double crochets in the next stitch two times. So this will be two double crochets in those three stitches there at the end. Then it's a half double crochet in the next 14 stitches. When after those 14 stitches are completed, let's count. So we have 14. Execute two half double crochets in the next five stitches. So that's two half double crochets in the next stitch 
five times. We are finishing up those two double crochets in that fifth stitch and then we will execute one half double crochet in the next 14 stitches. In the next 14. Let's count, that's 14. Now two half double crochets in the next two stitches. So each end has five stitches that hold two half double crochets. That oval is taking a nice shape. It has a good rounded edge. Now let's move on to round four. Let's join with a slip stitch to the top of that half double crochet, chain one, and one half double crochet in the joining stitch, just one. Sometimes that joining stitch can get buried. Make sure you hit that joining stitch. Two half double crochets in the next stitch. Now one half double crochet in the next stitch. And two half double crochets in the next stitch. And repeat that pattern two times. So the pattern is one half double crochet, two half double crochets, three times. So it's one, two, one, two, one, two. Now it's one half double crochet in the next 15 stitches. All right, we're there. So now it's two half double crochets in the next stitch and one half double crochet in the next stitch and we repeat that sequence five times. So the repeat is two half double crochets in the next stitch, one half double crochet in the next stitch five times. Remember we're going to be ending on this repeat with one half double crochet. So we've ended that repeat and we've ended with one half double crochet. Now we have one half double crochet in the next 14 stitches. And when those 14 stitches are executed, you will execute two half double crochets in the next stitch, two half double crochets, and then one half double crochet in the next stitch. And then two half double crochets in that last stitch. All right, we're ready to move on. Let's join with a slip stitch. We are moving on to round five, but first let's take a look. Let's get a measure. Looks good. It should measure around 11 inches. Yes, 11 inches. All right, we are right on target. Now let's move on to round five, which is the high back post half double crochet. You don't execute around the main post. You execute the stitch high above that main post. Here's the first one. Right under those top two loops, right under those top two loops, catching that high post. Let's do a few and then we'll slow down and give you a real good look. All right, the stitch is great. It moves the direction of your uh, fabric in an, in a four, at a 45 degree angle and it leaves that cute little ridge. So you execute the hook underneath, you put the hook underneath those top two loops, go around the high post to the back, grab your loop or loops, Pull it through to the back and you have three double loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through all three. Let's do that again. High, yarn over, and go high underneath, right underneath those top two loops. Put the hook through to the back, yarn over, pull up a loop. You have three double loops on the hook. Yarn over, pull through all three. I have a really in-depth tutorial on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down there so you can see that. So let's continue this around. When you get to the end of this round, you will have 58 stitches. And of course you bypass 
that um, chain one and join, but doesn't that look nice? That is such a nice treatment. Now, let's move on to rounds, rounds six through 10. Six through 10 is so simple. You switch to a K hook, that's very important. Chain one and half double crochet in each stitch around. And you come through and you join just as before, bypassing that chain one, you do this through round 10. So it's one double crochet, one half double crochet all the way around, join with a slip stitch, chain one, half double crochet in the joining stitch, and half double crochet in each stitch around. Do that through rounds 10. So I have 10 rounds here. I have just a couple of stitches left to make. Let me make those. There's an important step here at the end of round 10 or the beginning of round 11. Join with a slip stitch. Now we need to drop one strand of yarn. We have two on the hook, but we need to drop one. It doesn't matter which one you drop, but whichever one you drop, just cut that yarn and get it out of the way. You don't need it any longer for this portion of the basket. You will need to pick that back up on the hood, but now we will execute two single crochets in the joining stitch with that one strand of yarn. But first, chain one, two single crochets. Now it's one single crochet in the next stitch six times. So for the next six stitches, you will execute one single crochet. There's your second single crochet. So repeat the pattern of single crochet in the next six stitches and two single crochets in the seventh. You repeat that sequence seven times and then single crochet in the last eight stitches. And here I am at the last eight stitches and I join with a slip stitch. I need 66 stitches. That is the reason for the repeat. Now I switch from my K hook and move to an H hook. I'm only working with one strand of yarn. I will chain two and double crochet in the back loop only of the joining stitch and in each stitch around. Double crochet in the back loop only in each stitch around. There's the back loop. Right. Now that just folds nicely and we will execute a double crochet in the back loop only for round 12 all the way around and join. Then round 13 we do the exact same double crochet stitch but we use both of those loops and here we are at the end of round 13. So there's going to be a yarn change, a yarn color change. We're working up to make our way to that bunny stitch. So let's execute the last two double crochets and join with the slip stitch, but we don't pull up the yellow. We drop the yellow and pull up our bunny stitch color and just cut that off. And here's our bunny stitch color. I just pull it up with a loop. There we go. Pull it up kind of pull your stitches and or yarn tails and tighten it down. Chain one and take a couple of single crochet stitches. Then we need to stop and count stitches and place markers. The first marker will be in the fifth stitch from the join. So one, two, three, four, five. I'll place a marker there. And then from for the rest of the, the edge, we will place a marker 
for every 11th stitch. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Place a marker there and continue that around the basket. You'll end up with six markers. Now those markers are where we will start the bunny stitch. So let's get those markers in place and they are evenly placed on either side opposite each other and then one on each end. So let's get to that bunny stitch. I need to make three more single crochets. So let's get those single crochets made. We start the bunny stitch right below where we make a single crochet stitch. So move that marker. I have a very detailed bunny stitch tutorial. I'll place the link below. All right, now we turn our work. We placed a single crochet in the marked stitch. We're going to execute the first half of the bunny around that post. So slip stitch, chain three, and then slip stitch back into that second chain, and then back into the first chain. Now execute a single crochet around the post and you've just made a bunny foot. Look how cute, a little bunny foot. All right, now three half double crochets around the post. Now this can feel tight, so you might have to shove those stitches over a little bit. There we go, give them a shove. Now it's a single crochet and a slip stitch. All right, now turn your work, isn't that cute, first half of the bunny. Now turn your work again, just a little bit. You're going to execute the bunny head in the top of the double crochet two rows below. All right, so it's easy to find. You just kind of open it up and you can see those top two loops. All right, so it's two half double crochets. That's where I'm putting my hook is under those top two loops two half double crochet stitches, chain six, slip stitch back into the first chain, chain six again, slip stitch back into the first chain again. Those are the bunny ears. All right, now we need to fix those bunny ears in place. We're going to use this front loop or the third loop on that half double crochet and slip stitch right under that loop. And then two more half double crochets in that stitch. You're going to have to shove it over just a little bit. All right, there we go. Woo! We're good. Now we turn the work again, and then we go up the post of the stitch beside. But now keep in mind, you're going to have to put a single crochet at the top of that double crochet right there that we're working in. So there's a slip stitch, then a single crochet, three half double crochets, shove those stitches, a single crochet, chain three, Slip stitch in the second chain, slip stitch in the first chain, and then slip stitch around the post. Shove those stitches a little bit. Slip stitch right there. Aha! Now we have a bunny, but he's open. There's his head and his ears and his tail and his feet. But he is open, so you need to slip stitch right under the bunny foot that is opposite, and that is the first slip stitch that was made. So we need to close the bunny by slip stitching right there, and then single crochet in the top of that double crochet where the second half of the bunny was made, and then single crochet across to the next marker so that we can make another bunny. But isn't he cute? He's a cute little bunny. All right, let's take a few more stitches so you can see what it looks like. And then we will move on. 
And like I said, we single crochet 11 to that marked stitch. We do that all the way around this drop over edge and we come back through here and we join. All right, we have all of those adorable bunnies made. They'll need a little bit of shaping, that's okay. All right, now we're ready to join, but we need to bring up a new color. So drop the bunny stitch color and just cut it off. You don't need it. I love leaving a generous tail. That gives me enough room to sew in that edge. All right, drop the brown. I'm hanked down on it with my pinky of my right hand so I can keep tension on that stitch. Pull up the grass color and single crochet in each stitch around, but first you must chain one. There we go. It gets a little tricky right behind the bunny. I want to show you how that looks behind the bunny. All right, so we're right up next to the bunny. Okay, there's the last stitch before the bunny. Now we fold the bunny back and that first single crochet can be hard to find but it is directly above that post and it's right there dig your hook down in there and then execute this all the way around and we will join and then we'll start the grass stitch the grass stitch is fun you cannot mess up from here on out it is almost a foolproof set of stitches that you cannot mess up. All right, so I'll meet you right there. So I'm meeting you at the join. Yep, no color changes at this point. Now we're going to be making spike single crochet stitches. We're going to be making short spike single crochet stitches and long spike single crochet stitches. So it's a chain one single crochet in the joining stitch. Now we're going to drop down just a cup, just a little ways. This is a short spike stitch. Pull the loops up to the height that you're working on and execute a single crochet. Execute a single crochet in the next stitch. Now we're going to drop a good bit longer. Yeah, that's longer. Pulling up the loops, single crochet in the next. Now we need to execute a spike stitch in the bottom of that bunny. It helps to, it helps. It gives the appearance that he's sitting on the grass. All right, single crochet in the next, then a short spike stitch, single crochet in the next, and a long spike stitch, long, pull up your loops, don't, it shouldn't be tight, it should be loose and generous, single crochet, short spike stitch, you can make it as short or as long as you want, you could really get uh, fancy and make long, extra long, spike stitches if you'd like. It's your grass. I know the grass in West Virginia this time of year at Easter is always high-low. It's great for hiding Easter eggs. All right, we are right back to another bunny. I want to show you that again. So it's a single crochet or a short spike stitch. Then, and that's okay, I'm going to go ahead and put a spike stitch right at the base, at the bottom of that bunny. The general rule of thumb is a spike stitch, a single crochet, a spike stitch, a single crochet, or a short spike stitch, single crochet, long spike stitch, single crochet. All the way around, I'll meet you at the join and we'll do another row of grass. And we are at the join. I have one more stitch to make and we end up with two single crochets right beside of each other that are not spiked and that's totally okay. I'm going to join, chain one, and in this first stitch, I make a spike stitch. This spike stitch, I execute a single crochet. Now it's a spike stitch, whatever your pleasure, short or long. This is your grass. Now a single crochet in the spike stitch and a spike stitch where a single crochet was single crochet you cannot mess this up you can put as many spike stitches if you'd like uh, spread your wings and fly a little bit just enjoy this now we'll come around and join but we're going to need to bring in a new color 
So we're at the join, made that last spike stitch. And again, it's okay to have two spike stitches beside each other. We're dropping the green and pulling up our contrasting color. And we pull that up, execute a chain one and single crochet in each stitch around. I apologize for not catching the join on video, but you've seen that several times. It's a pull up the new yarn at the join, chain one, execute a single crochet at the join, execute that all the way around. It's just a plain old single crochet and I'll meet you at the end. And here we are at the end. Just one more row or round left to do. So let's execute those last two single crochets and join with a slip stitch to the top of that single crochet right there. Now it's chain one loosely. We are going to loosely chain one and slip stitch in the next stitch. Loosely chain one, slip stitch in the next, chain one, slip stitch in the next, chain one, slip stitch in the next, do that all the way around. That creates a beautiful little ripple or zigzaggy looking stitch. I love this stitch. I have it in many of my designs, but here we go. Let's take a look at this nice ripple edge. So let's get around to the other, to the end and join and let you see how that looks. That just looks so nice. So let's finish this up and join and end off. And then let's look at our bunnies. Chain one, I almost forgot that. Chain one, slip stitch. Goodness, chain one, slip stitch. Chain one and join with a slip stitch. End off. After that join. Now let's take a look at our bunnies. Let's think about how we can embellish these. I think they would be cute with a little bunny tail, like they're sitting backwards. I picked up some little fluff balls at Joann's and some cute little uh, flower buttons. Just real quick, just, just bear with me for a minute. I just wanted to embellish a little bit, super cute. Now it's time to move on to the hood. We will be using the bunnies as markers. Find the very first bunny that was made and place a marker to the right of the very first bunny that was made then place a marker exactly opposite that bunny. The hood will be executed between those two bunnies over 24 stitches. So count your stitches, make sure you have 24. Then using your K crochet hook, tie slip knot holding two strands of yarn and attach with a slip stitch. And a slip knot can be tied in so many ways. Um, attach in the marked stitch with the outside of the basket facing you. You are looking at the outside of the basket. Join with a slip stitch and all you do is just slip stitch it on. Then chain one and half double crochet in that joining stitch. And in each stitch around. Now I dig deep. I don't use just those top two loops that are flimsy. I really go down in and I grab right down in between and I go through to the other side. I want it to be, I want this hood to be stable. So really dig that hook down in there underneath three or four loops if possible. Just really make it a solid base. So half double crochet in each of the 24 stitches around, you will be start at the back behind one of the bunnies and you will end behind the third bunny. See right there's the hood, uh, the hole. Just kind of put your hook in there. It's coming out the other side. It's really deep. It's not high and under the top loops. It's down in there so that it'll be stable. Now it looks like we have 24 stitches, but let's count to make sure. Mm, nope, we need one more stitch. One more stitch behind that bunny. Now, chain one and turn. And single crochet in each stitch across. This is a pretty straightforward row. We will begin the decreases in the next row. And 
And by the time we get to the end of the row, we will have 24 single crochets. At the last stitch, single crochet, chain one, and turn. Now row three has a single crochet in the first stitch, a single crochet in the second stitch, and a decrease. And that is two single crochets together. Now single crochet in the next four stitches. There's the decrease. Two, three, four. Now a decrease, which is insert your hook, pull up a loop, insert your hook in the second stitch and pull up a loop. Now yarn over, pull through all three, that's two single crochet stitches together. Now we will execute that sequence across three times, that sequence of single crochet in the next four stitches and a decrease. We will execute that three times total. When we get to the end of this row, it is single crochet in the last two stitches. Now chain one and turn. This is row four, and you will single crochet in the first and second stitch. And then decrease. Two stitches together, now single crochet in the next three stitches and decrease. Now decrease. Now we will execute that sequence three times. That sequence of one, two, three single crochets, then a decrease. One, two, three single crochets, and a decrease, and a cross. That's three times. Then when you get to the end of the row, it's a single crochet in the last two stitches, chain one, chain one and turn, and you'll have 16 stitches. Now execute one single crochet in the first stitch and then a decrease. One, two together, then single crochet in the next two stitches and then a decrease. And here's the decrease. And we execute that sequence three times We'll have 12 stitches at the end of this round. And when we're at the end of the sequence, we will single crochet in the last stitch, chain one and turn to begin row six, not round, I apologize. Then it's single crochet in the first stitch, decrease, single crochet in the next two stitches, then decrease, this is a short row, I'm going to go ahead and stop here. It won't take long to finish this, but let's go ahead and finish. Two single crochets, now a decrease and a single crochet in the last stitch, and you will have nine stitches for row six, chain one, and turn. It's looking like a rounded hood now. So let's move on to round row seven, not round, single crochet in the first stitch, decrease, single crochet in the next three stitches. Yes, the next three stitches. One, two, three, now a decrease, and a single crochet in the last stitch. Chain one and turn. Row eight, that's really looking like a hood. All right. It is cupping nicely. 
Row eight is single crochet in the first stitch and decrease. Single crochet in the next stitch and decrease and single crochet in that last stitch. There we go. That's a total of five stitches. Chain one and turn. Slip stitch in the very first stitch that is made. There's not much left that's left, but slip stitch. There we go. That can be a little tricky. Now, three single crochets together. So insert hook in the next stitch and pull up a loop three times, then a yarn over and pull through all four loops. And slip stitch in the last stitch, but do not end off. There we go. That is the finish of the hood. Now we need to put an edging round on it. Oh, that looks really nice really happy. Now the edging round is easy. Chain one and execute nine single crochets down the side of the hood. Now you may only get eight. I think seven or six would be too few, but you may get nine. It does not matter how many um, stitches at this point. Oh, uh, don't like that. I think I need to put a stitch right in there. Just make um, enough stitches that it's not too tight or that it's not so loose and wobbly that you get ripples. You want it to have a smooth edge that's going to continue to help pull the hood into place or shape the hood. There's my last stitch on the side of the hood. Now I want to skip this first stitch. to pull those bunnies back. I'm going to skip that first stitch and then single single crochet right there. That will help pull the hood forward also. And single crochet three times. That's three single crochets in the next stitch. Now chain seven. Skip seven stitches. Just make sure that that single crochet where you, after you've skipped those stitches, lands behind a bunny head. Now, that looks nice. Now, count your stitches. This does not have to be exact. You just want your handles to be opposite each other. But a general rule is count 21 stitches, place a marker, and then single crochet in all 21 stitches around until you get to the marker. Or single crochet around until you are behind the bunny head. There we go. I am placing my marker and then I am going to single crochet around the edge of the, the basket until I reach the marker. And then I will start the second handle and I'll catch up with you in a moment. I have single crocheted around until I have hit the second marker that is behind the bunny. I've chained seven and then I'm going to skip seven stitches and that leaves me three single crochets just as it is just as on the other side three single crochets at the base of the hood and after those three single crochets are executed then start adding those single crochet stitches up the opposite side of the hood until you meet that bit beginning single crochet. And remember, this is placing stitches where you think it is shaping the hood the best. You don't want to ripple. You don't want too many stitches. I had nine stitches on each side of the hood. Just continue to crochet up the side of the hood. 
getting close to the beginning. That's the um, ending stitch. One more stitch and then join with the top to the top of that first single crochet right there. Just want to make sure you see it. Bypass that chain one. Now slip stitch, make a generous slip stitch. Continue chaining one loosely and slip stitching all the way around the edge of the hood, including those chain handles. That will give that more stability and it's not that hard to do. It really, I love this ripple stitch. It makes such a nice treatment. Let's speed that camera up and get to the end. We're almost finished. The tutorial for the bed, the, look how nice. The tutorial for the bed is next. Oh, it'll be so nice when that is totally finished. I'm at the end, have to take a little bit of a look. Look how that ripple stitch just pulls that all together, especially with a ripple stitch on the edge of the drop over edge last couple of ripple stitches here and then we will end off. Now make sure to watch to the end as I have a tutorial on how to make a pull tie bow. One of the embellishments that you can put on this little Moses basket, I chose a pink satin bow, nice loopy bow. End it off and it looks nice. Now you may want to shoot, shape that hood with a little bit of a steam blocking um, application. There's a quick tutorial in the pattern on how to do that. It's pretty simple. Before we go any farther and before I show you how to make the removable liner on this basket, on this Moses basket, I want to remind you that I have sewing tutorials as well as crochet tutorials. I hope you'll like and subscribe. Supplies needed for the uh, bed for the Moses basket are scissors, pencil, glue sticks, and a glue gun. A little bit of stuffing, a piece of cardboard, and a cute piece of fabric. Now, place the Moses basket bottom side down, centered on the cardboard. You will need to trace around the base of the cardboard, not standing your pencil up even, but just under the edge where that ridge is. Trace around the basket. It is not going to be perfect. It does not have to be perfect. There we go. That's not perfect, but that is going to do. By the time I cut that out, it will be fine and I can cut off some little edges if I need. I'm using a utility knife. I'm not cutting all the way through. I'm just scoring this. I don't want to cut what is beneath. I don't like this method as well. So then I make a cut in the side of the cardboard so that I can hold on to the piece that is cut. And then I just stick my utility knife in there and I just start wiggling. And it just cuts that out really nice. I don't have any um, thing destroyed underneath. It just doesn't take very long at all. It's kind of a nice method. There we go, we have a finished piece. Now it has a few bumps, but I can even those out with some scissors here in just a little bit. All right, let's see if it fits. It's a perfect fit. We don't want this to be too big. We don't want it to be too small. This will end up being about 10 inches. The bottom of the basket is 11 inches. And I believe this is going to be about a little five and a quarter. So the bottom of the basket itself is 11 inches, right about 10 and a half, 11 inches, 10 and a half. So that was a good width. So that's about six. So the width is really good. So now let's trim off some of those bumpy edges. If um, the cardboard liner is too big, you can always just go around and trim just as I did, but I had some bumps. All right, place the cardboard four to five inches away from the edge on a folded piece of fabric and then just eyeball it and cut out two to three inches around the perimeter of the cardboard. 
Now leave those two pieces of card um, fabric together and leave the cardboard sitting on the fabric. Center it as best you can and then start cutting little slits all along the edge. This is so that you can pull the fabric up and over and glue it in place without having rips, ripples and bumps on the edges. You need a smooth application. Now those slits do not go all the way to the cardboard, just about a quarter of an inch shy. So take your, take your stuffing, kind of shred it up, place it in place, you know, make yourself a little bit of a bed, um, add some more stuffing to the top, fill in those holes, and it should be piled kind of high. Here we go. It's kind of piled high. Now, pick, bunch it in as best you can, then pick up the whole piece and just lay a bunch of glue down on that cardboard and set that there. That, that stuffing is not going to move anywhere. Now take one piece of fabric, fold it in half and crease right there in the middle, fold it in half again, and that will give you your center mark. And then you will know where to uh, lay that piece of fabric because with all that fluff there, it's kind of hard to get it centered, so you need a marker. So start gluing the strips or the tabs up one at a time, north, south, east, and west. That will help you have a smooth application. And I like to pull the tab up before I put the glue on to make sure I'm getting the glue in the right spot. Continue in the north, south, east, west fashion of just gluing a few tabs up at a time. This makes, this makes a smoother finish. And it's looking good. Now we're going to use that second piece of fabric to cover this exposed cardboard and the rough edges on the bottom. It's fairly easy. Just a little more cutting of the using your scissors is needed. Almost done. Look there. That's pretty cool. Yeah, looks pretty nice. Now take that second piece where all of those slits are, cut just a little bit deeper, a little bit more than a quarter of an inch, but those cuts need to be deeper because we want that piece to be smaller and then just trim off about a half to a half an inch quarter of an inch of all those trim off all those tabs and then fold those tabs in and use your hands to press them in place just to get a general pressing it's not going to be the finished pressing then use an iron and iron that together there we go now it is ready to lift and place on the back of the Moses bed. I see, as I put that on, I saw a few little tabs that needed to be glued down a little better. So take a good hard look at everything. Make sure that it is nice and neat. You can always re-glue and replace and reposition and trim off extra edges. Absolutely no problem. All right, let's glue the back on. Just leave it laid there and just pick it up pick up the edges a little bit at a time. Uh, I try to glue pretty deep into the edge and then go back later and finish putting the edges down. Pretty, pretty nice. I like that. I'm pretty happy with it. This is the second gluing. I hate having glue hanging all over the place, but I don't want fabric flopping either. All right, let's put it in the bed. Ah, that's pretty nice. Now let's think about some embellishments. Great. That baby fits just fine. That's a seven and a half inch to eight inch baby doll. Got that at the Dollar Tree. Now, you may want to put some lace on the hood and put some ribbon on that hood. That is very pretty. If it had bunnies on it, that would be perfect. I also like this floral ribbon, although I think it's just a little bit busy, but let's tie this into a knot. It's 23, 24 inches, and it's an inch and a half wide, and you make a loop, leaving yourself about a two to three inch tail. Pinch that together, a pinch and a fold back. Now grab that tail and pull it down. Now the use that 
long tail and wrap around your finger and your thumb and shape that into the form of a bow. It's looking like a bow now. Now you have that loop, that loop right there. Open that up a little bit. Now slide your thumb out while pushing that piece of ribbon through, the long tail through, and then give it a pull. Now open up that ribbon. I folded that ribbon in half to get it through the loop better and open it up and shape and pull and tug. I think if I use this, I'm going to make it into a tuxedo bow. So in order to make it into a tuxedo bow, you kind of, that's pretty, that's really pretty. Of course the edges will need trimmed, but to make it a tuxedo bow, you pull the tails directly underneath and you would glue those in place up underneath the tails, but you kind of got to fuss and fidget. This is the part I like, making it look pretty. Well, that looks like a tuxedo bow to me, and it will be would be beautiful. Although I think the floral is too busy. I'm going to go with a pink satin. If you'll hang on here, I'll show you how to tie that pink satin bow. I would either glue that or use a needle and thread to sew that in place. So here is the pink satin bow. Same technique, make a loop, have a tail, pinch it, fold the ribbon, wrap it around, put it through the hole. There we go. Now I'm going to leave this one loopy. I want long tails on this one. There we go, looks pretty. There's something else we need to do. We need to glue the bow. Yeah, that's twisted, there we go, twisted. There we go, looks nice. Now let's take the glue gun, open up your um, ribbon, your bow at that point, and put a glue between the tail and the loop of the ribbon. Same here, right inside that knot, get a, get a decent amount of glue. That way this will, will not come untied. There you go. Now let's trim the edges how you want. A dovetail treatment is nice. This is quick, and then Heat seal the edges. I use a match. I have the hardest time with a lighter. I just use a match and I hold that match at least a three quarters to a half an inch away and it will melt that satin. Oh, that looks so pretty. All right, now I'm going to fold my hood in half because I want a center mark. I wanna make sure I'm getting the knot of the bow right in the center. So I placed a pin there so I could tell where the center is and then just pull the pin out. I know I've got it the knot where I want it and just add some glue or you can sew that in place. It's up to you. There we go. Did you enjoy making your basket? I hope you made a uh, little covered liner for that. I hope you'll come to my side of the mountain again soon. It was so good to have you. You can find these little dolls at the Dollar Tree. I know you can order them online as well as find them in the stores, but isn't this little bunny stitch basket the cutest a little moses basket all little girls want moses baskets don't they i hope you enjoyed i hope you'll come again soon bye